Have you ever wondered what enduring qualities make a movie an everlasting symbol of the industry? One such timeless classic is the 1961 film, The Comancheros. This Western adventure, directed by Michael Curtis, has left an indelible mark on the world of cinema. Perhaps you've watched it countless times, or maybe you're about to discover it for the first time. Regardless of your experience with the film, we'd love to hear your most cherished memory or personal experience related to the Comancheros. Share your stories and memories in the comments below. Now, let's set the stage with some random facts about the show. The Comancheros is not just another Western film. It's a unique blend of action, adventure, and camaraderie. Starring the legendary John Wayne and Lee Marvin, it takes you on a journey to the untamed lands of Texas in the 1840s. The film explores the complexities of law and order in the Wild West, as Wayne's character, a Texas Ranger, crosses paths with Marvin's charming, roguish gambler. The movie is known for its picturesque cinematography, capturing the vast and rugged landscapes of the American frontier. It's a tale of friendship, redemption, and the pursuit of justice in a world where the line between lawmen and outlaw is often blurred. What enduring qualities do you think make this movie an everlasting symbol of the industry? When was the first time you watched this movie? Share your thoughts and memories with us in the comments below. The Comancheros remains a testament to the timeless appeal of the Western genre, a classic that continues to captivate audiences to this day. So, don your cowboy hat and ride along with us into the world of the Comancheros, where adventure awaits around every dusty corner. The 1961 movie The Comancheros had an interesting twist behind the scenes. Originally, Gary Cooper and James Garner were slated to be the leading actors. However, Cooper's ill health and Garner's dispute with Jack L. Warner led to a change in the cast. The film also featured a unique aspect, as members of the Navajo tribe were employed and transported from Monument Valley to the shooting location near Moab, Utah. Surprisingly, they spoke their lines in Navajo instead of Comanche, adding an authentic touch to the movie. In the transition from novel to film, the character dynamics shifted. Paul Regret, portrayed by Stuart Whitman, was the lead in the novel, but for the film adaptation, Captain Jake Cutter, played by John Wayne, took a more prominent role. These behind-the-scenes facts shed light on the challenges and adaptations that occurred during the making of The Comancheros, making it a fascinating movie to explore. The movie The Comancheros from 1961, starring John Wayne, was a Western film that featured notable behind-the-scenes details. One interesting fact is that when Captain Jake Cutter, played by John Wayne, signs the hotel register as McBain, one of the names in the register is William H. Clothier, who happened to be the movie's director of photography. This subtle connection between the actor and the crew member adds a unique dimension to the film's production. Additionally, it's worth noting that 20th Century Fox had the script rewritten by John Wayne's regular writer, James Edward Grant. This collaboration between Wayne and Grant contributed to the development of the movie's storyline and character dynamics. While the Comancheros depicted a fictionalized version of the Texas Rangers operating as a unified force, it's essential to understand that the actual history of the Texas Rangers differed. The Rangers began as a group of 60 men, which later expanded to 150 during the Texas War for Independence. However, after Texas became a state in 1845, the Rangers were disbanded, as their role was supposed to be taken over by the U.S. Army. In 1850, they were reconstituted as a force of 100, divided into six companies patrolling a vast area of 268,597 square miles, far from the unified army portrayed in the film. Their officially specified uniform included a long duster coat, an identification made from a Mexican peso coin, which adds a touch of historical accuracy to the movie's representation. In conclusion, The Comancheros is a Western classic that not only brought John Wayne's star power to the forefront, but also featured interesting connections among the cast and crew. The movie's script was revised by Wayne's trusted writer, James Edward Grant, and while it depicted the Texas Rangers as a united force, the actual history of the Rangers was quite different. These details enrich our understanding of this iconic 1961 film. 
1961 movie The Comancheros holds an interesting tidbit from its filming days. On the first day of shooting, John Wayne, the film star, confronted the third assistant director, Tom Mankiewicz. Wayne, a staunch supporter of Richard Nixon and a critic of John F. Kennedy, didn't take kindly to Mankiewicz wearing a Kennedy campaign button. He advised, I'd de take that button off if I were you. We don't advertise socialists on my set. Wayne's disdain for Kennedy stemmed from his belief that the president was responsible for the failure of the Bay of Pigs invasion. This incident offers a glimpse into the political atmosphere of the time and the personal beliefs of the actors on set. Interestingly, the Comancheros also had an impact beyond its own production. John Wayne was so impressed with Lee Marvin's performance as Tully Crow in the movie that he recommended Marvin to director John Ford for the role of the eponymous villain in The Man Who Shot Liberty Valance in 1962. This recommendation from a legendary actor to a legendary director speaks to the quality of Marvin's portrayal in The Comancheros and the camaraderie within the Hollywood industry. These behind-the-scenes anecdotes add depth to the history of The Comancheros, shedding light on the political dynamics of the time and the collaborative relationships within the film industry. It's fascinating to see how these off-camera moments can influence the course of cinema. So, while The Comancheros is a classic western on the surface, there's more to its story than meets the eye. The 1961 movie The Comancheros is known for its interesting behind-the-scenes story. During the filming, director Michael Curtis fell seriously ill and eventually passed away shortly after the movie's release. On the days when Curtis was too unwell to work, John Wayne, one of the film's stars, took over the directorial duties. However, when the film was completed, John Wayne declined to be credited as co-director and insisted that Michael Curtis's name alone appear as the director. This wasn't an isolated incident for John Wayne, as he later took on a similar role in the film Big Jake in 1971, when director George Sherman also took ill during production. Again, Wayne directed the film on the days when Sherman couldn't and refused to be credited as a co-director, showing his respect for the original directors. It's also worth noting that the Comancheros marked the final film of actor Gin Big Boy Williams, who passed away shortly after its completion. These behind-the-scenes anecdotes shed light on the camaraderie and professionalism of the actors and filmmakers involved in the Comancheros, making it a movie with a unique production history. As we draw the curtains on our journey through the 1961 cinematic gem, The Comancheros, I invite you to take a moment to reflect on the tapestry of emotions that wove in your heart. This classic, set against the rugged backdrop of the Old West, stirred the depths of our souls with its captivating storytelling, memorable characters, and the timeless allure of adventure. Did you find yourself captivated by John Wayne's indomitable presence? Or perhaps you were drawn to the roguish charm of Stuart Whitman? Were you entranced by the rugged landscapes, the horseback chases, or the thrilling showdowns that unfolded on the screen? Maybe it was the rich exploration of friendship and honor that struck a chord within you, reminding us that even in the wild frontier, there's a code that binds us together. Your personal connection to the Comancheros is a testament to the enduring power of cinema, a connection that transcends time and place. Whether it was a family movie night, a solo adventure, or a cherished memory shared with loved ones, this film has etched its mark on your heart. Now, I invite you to share your treasured memories and thoughts about the Comancheros. What scenes or dialogues left an indelible mark on your cinematic journey? How did it shape your appreciation for the golden era of Hollywood? Share your thoughts and let the conversation flow like a lively campfire discussion among fellow fans. Thank you for joining us on this nostalgic ride through the Comancheros. Your time and interest are deeply appreciated. Your insights and reflections enrich the tapestry of our cinematic exploration. Until we meet again for our next adventure in the world of storytelling, stay tuned for more exciting discussions, all lovingly crafted, of course.